Hey friends, welcome to this week's nursery tour. We just got a gorgeous delivery of shrubs and perennials from our friends at Panoramic Farms here in North Carolina. We actually got another delivery yesterday from another fellow North Carolina company. And so we have got great shrubs, trees, perennials to share with you of course, beautiful fall annuals. There is a lot to cover and all of our people are working super hard to get all of this sorted and put out onto the lot for you to come shop. So we're gonna go through, look at all of these great new plants that have arrived here at the nursery. Don't forget, um, the online store is open. So you can go to gardeningwithcreekside.com and go ahead and order um, your shrubs that we have available that are going to be in quart size containers couple people have asked and so it may be a little bit confusing so it is my job to educate and train you in this thought. The online store and the retail garden center are going to have completely different inventories, right? So we can't, we're not going to be shipping three gallon shrubs across the country. We will be shipping quart size containers. Now, will there be overlap from like the same, some of the same plants online and here at the nursery? Absolutely. But just because you see it online does not mean we have it here at the nursery and vice versa. People have been asking if we're gonna be shipping mums or if we're gonna be shipping pansies. No, we are not. We are gonna be shipping those quart size shrubs that are available on the website. So just keep in mind, if you're a local and you go to the website and you're like, oh my gosh, they only have a couple of shrubs or I don't know, whatever you see online. No, 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 no. The best way to know what the nursery has currently is through these weekly nursery tours. That is why we do them so that our folks who are coming to visit us, you can see real time what we have here at the nursery, what it looks like, and that it is available to you. All right, so let's just go through this because there's a lot of beautiful plants here. Panoramic does a phenomenal job in their growing. We actually visited them, I think it was late spring, early summer. Um, I'll try to link that video where we went to the nursery and, and got a tour. It's a great family owned company, sweet friends of ours, and they grow amazing plants. We got a good selection variety of what we call foundation plants. And these are gonna be evergreen shrubs that will be great for the front of your house. These are what we would call like the bones of your garden. This is Mr. Bowling Ball. And Mr. Bowling Ball is a type of Thuya. Um, and it is going to be nice and petite. It is only gonna be like two, two and a half feet tall and maybe three feet wide. Now you can see that I am running my hands over this it is really soft and fuzzy it is not pokey not it may look like a cedar and cedars can be quite um, sharp on their on their needles this is not at all I adore this plant we're probably going to be redoing the front of our um, front porch because our boxwoods have just gotten so massive and I am really really intrigued about Mr. Bowling Ball so these are all three gallons. So we have Mr. Bowling Ball will be a great addition. A great um, complement, similar plant in the fact that this is not a new one at all for us. This is Fire Chief and Fire, Fire Chief is an arborvitae. It too is going to be um, a nice petite on the sh shorter side, smaller side of a foundation planting. Now it is an arborvitae and so you will notice that it has like a coppery color to the top of it. This is completely natural. And what happens is as the cooler temperatures come and stay, this whole plant on the outside will turn this coppery red brown color. Now, some people love it. I think it's super cool that the plant basically is like a little chameleon and it changes with the season. Some people look at it and go, oh my gosh, it looks like it's dead. I don't see that it is not dead if it were dead trust me all this would be coming off but that is just the fun texture to it and if you were to put say this um, and pair it with something that's a nice glossy evergreen foliage to it would be really a great contrast so another wonderful fire chief arborvitaes wonderful new one for us i don't know that we've had this is dragon prince We've had it before. So this is Dragon Prince and Dragon Prince is a type of a cryptomeria. That's right. Thank you. So cryptomeria, it too is going to be nice and petite. So when I'm saying petite, I'm saying it's going to be in that three foot 
to four foot size. We have cryptomerias behind our house that are trees that are like 30 feet tall. This is not gonna happen to this one. It too has a fun little texture to it. Um, it is not as soft and fluffy as Mr. Bowling Ball, but a nice, completely different texture. And you could pair these really well. The Dragon Prince also has more of a chartreuse, brighter color to it. So you can complement, you, you can have the greens in there, but it's a totally different color and texture. So my folks who, I mean, it's fall, right? Fall is the perfect time to be doing your foundation plantings. If you're pulling out, you know, the front of your house and you want to put some stuff in, we have got a great selection for you to choose from here. Now we, I, I'll just say this, this is Little Lime Punch, but you can't have these. You're going to have the ones on our lot because these are going to go up into the signature garden. We didn't want to deplete um, a lot of our hydrangeas, so we um, ordered from our friends at Panoramic because, of course, they do great um, products and, and plants. So all of these little lime punches are going to be going into the signature garden. Let's just start. Let's start over here and we'll work our way. Why not? Because there's, there's a lot going on. We got everybody in here tagging and, and just sorting and everything. Limelight standard hydrangea tree forms. Um, they do, I love the look of this plant. Now, you may look at this and say, but it's not in bloom. And that is totally fine. There's actually buds on here. So we have, of course, plenty of growing time left. So you very easily could get fresh flowers on these limelight standards this season. But nice and tight and compact, beautiful, nice straight trunks on them. The limelight standards, of course, can go um, make great for the side of your house. So if you want to have a structure like a small tree, but you don't want to have a tree, then the limelight standards would be a great option for you. They're going to need, of course, that full sun. If you don't have them on irrigation, maybe give them a little bit of a break in the afternoon. If you have a massive large pot like that Asian water bowl from Unique Stone that we have, this would be stunning in a very large container. Underplant, of course, with your annuals or smaller, shorter perennials or smaller, shorter shrubs. So limelight standards, we've got quite a selection of them and they are beautiful. Now, you know that we adore the summerific hibiscus. These are perennial hibiscus from Proven Winners. And, but I would say probably these have been our two most popular varieties. So we have Edge of Night and we have Holy Grail. We have currently sold out of all of our inventory of both of these hibiscus. So we picked some up from Panoramic. That way we will have them available for you. So if you want them now and you want to put them in and we'll have them hopefully maybe in early spring when we reopen. But the summerific hibiscus is, I mean, look at this y'all. Both of these are just gorgeous. Jer, how about come in here and show them. Um, Edge of Night is relatively new on the market within the, like, the last two or three years. But both Edge of Night and Holy Grail have really dark foliage. Edge of Night is going to have, of course, that really iridescent pink bloom on it. Holy Grail is that really nice, deep, deep, deep red and just make beautiful perennial additions to your gardens. Both of these are going to have more of what we call the gumdrop shape and the fact that they are going to be fatter than they are tall. The more sun you give them, <clears throat> excuse me, the more sun you give them, the more water you give them, the happier they're going to be, the faster they're going to grow, and the longer they are going to bloom. Just adore these. Absolutely adore these. Now, another really fun, gorgeous, stunning uh, perennial is Dark Side of the Moon. So the Dark Side of the Moon is not a still be from Proven Winners. It is a perennial. On the tag, it will be listed as like full sun to shade. If you're in the south, if you're in the southeast, you're going to want to put this in shade. It can get some morning sun, filtered sun, but you certainly are not going to want to put this in the full afternoon sun. It will fry. But it does, um, of course, you can see that the this is an old bloom head on it. Here is another one. That's what a still be is known for. Those really nice, upright, full blooms on it. So if you have that shade garden, this will pair beautifully with Brunnera or Hostas. We've got some perennial grasses that we're going to see in just a minute. Jackson's tagging those right now. These would all be beautiful additions because you've got different color, you've got different texture. So dark side of the moon, beautiful, a still be. Now, my people, 
that have been following us for quite a while now, right? If you will go back all the way to when we installed our patio in the backyard, I planted three of the white shishi camellias from Southern Living. Beautiful, beautiful full sun camellia that does pure white double flowers. It's like a bloom. So kind of, if you're not familiar and you're thinking like a gardenia, similar to that. We have never been able to get them. That's why we've never had them here at the nursery because we could never find them to be able to sell them. But guess what? The day has come and we have got the white shishi camellia. They are here. They are ready to go. I was telling Cece about this and I was like, Cece, don't even like waste your time or energy on trying to move these because I have a feeling these are gonna fly out of here. Now, this is a Sasanqua. Look at all of the buds on this plant. It is going to be absolutely loaded with those double pure white flowers. And I love the white shishi in the fact that it is going to be nice and petite. It is only three to four feet tall and wide full sun to part shade, hardy end zones seven to nine. I do have mine on the back patio. They receive full day sun, sun up, sun down. They are on a drip irrigation, so they do get supplemental water. Um, it seems like, especially with your camellias, if once you have your buds and all of a sudden they'll dry up and drop off, then that's a water issue. So they need consistent moisture, especially when they're forming their buds. But I'm telling you, if you've been eyeballing and thinking about the white shishi camellia, you need to come out here and get them because I cannot guarantee how long they're going to last. They are going to be out of here. Um, my, my ladies working here might even just, you know, take out the whole inventory and so you may not even get a chance to get them. I'm joking, but you really do have time. All right, boxwoods. Now, this is a great new addition to the boxwood line. This is a new gen boxwood and this is Freedom. I'm pretty sure, yes. So if you have had problems with boxwood blight or spider mites or just a problems with boxwoods but you love boxwoods, this could be a very good answer for you. So the new gen boxwood, Freedom especially, has good resistance to the boxwood blight. Um, notice with proper care, that means consistent moisture, consistent watering. Um, it has great uh, resistance to boxwood leaf miner. It is gorgeous. It is a deer resistant um, and just a nice, beautiful boxwood in itself. The mature size, right? So when you, with proper care, in 15 years, this plant will be four feet tall and three and a half feet wide. It is considered a fast grower, three to five inches per year. It can go anywhere from full sun to full shade. So extremely adaptable, hardy end zones five to eight. This would be a great substitute for winter green or winter gem or green beauty or gem stoffer. So if you've had any of those and you've had problems with them, then the new gen freedom boxwood would be a great option for you. Um, I personally adore boxwoods. I think they're beautiful. I may be one of those weird people. I like the way that they smell. Um, and we have winter gem, I think, we think it's winter gem in front of our house and they've just gotten too big um, but part of me wants to put in boxwoods again and then maybe put another evergreen in front of it to have like a double layer um, time will tell on that one but new gen freedom for sure on that we'll move around here since jackson's working this is a fun viburnum from proven winners it's not brand new on the market but it is relatively new this is glitters and glows viburnum and the glitters and glows, what they did is they actually took, I don't know, a couple of years ago, they had all that glitters, that was one plant, and then all that glows, another plant. So what they did is they combined the, the two plants because you don't have to worry about planting both plants, one's male, one's female. They're all in here in the container together. So they took them, they combined them, and you get this beautiful viburnum. I too am a huge fan of viburnums. This is gonna be hardy in zones four to eight. This will be good for um, like the back of your bed, um, out on the periphery maybe of your garden. They're gonna be four to six tall and wide. You're gonna space them about four to seven feet apart. 
they bloom in the spring. It is a wonderful naturalizer, great for rain gardens, borders, can do anywhere from sun to part shade. And so what they'll do, let's see if, Jack, if Jerry can show you, but they start with the white flower. So in the spring, they'll do the white flower on them, a nice little kind of a, if you're familiar with viburnums, that little small white flower, and then it turns into the blue berries. Not a blueberry, but a blue berry. Birds love this. It is a great addition to your garden, um, and they are deciduous, so you'll have, I'm not sure if these have fall color on them as well. I'd have to look that up, but I grabbed a couple of extras of these because they are going to go into the signature garden as well. All right, we'll, we'll tiptoe around this way because we were talking about hostas and grasses. Here we have the Everillo grass. We have Everillo and we have Feather Falls. Both of these, dear heavens, y'all, are these not stunning? These are perennial grasses for your predominantly shade garden. They can do morning sun, filtered sun, but you're thinking right of a shade garden. These are evergreen. You don't prune them. They have that beautiful weeping habit to them. You can put them in containers. You can put them in the landscape. I have the Everillo up at the entrance to the um, nursery up there. I have Feather Falls in various places. I have them in containers. I have them in the landscape. Both of these will get nice sizes on them and they keep that weeping habit and they're, the mound is just going to get bigger on both of them. But I know a lot of times in shade gardens we need something bright. The Everillo is a great addition and we got um, a fun pasta. I think this is blue muffin, I believe. Here it is. Blueberry muffin. So blueberry muffin is going to be a what we consider a blue hosta, but look, if you were to put these together in the same bed, gorgeous contrast with each other, really, really beautiful. So um, Jerry says that we need more hostas, like a hole in the head, but I just could not pass those up. They were so stinking cute. He didn't know that I ordered them. He was like, blueberry muffin, what is that? And I was like, it might be a hosta, but we're not gonna talk about it. We're just gonna let you sweet people come shop and take them all and buy them up and then he can't say anything to me, right? Uh, okay, I think that was it from this delivery, yes? yes? I think so. All right, now we're gonna walk through. I was not here from, for the delivery from Pender, so we're going to go through and Jerry is going to help me find the things that were delivered. I know we got Encore Azaleas. Randy is putting those out. Look at those gorgeous ones. So this is the um, Autumn Bonfire. Autumn Bonfire is a really super popular, popular, versatile Encore Azalea because it's nice and petite. This one is only going to be, uh, yeah, three feet tall, three and a half wide. It is, of course, that reblooming Encore Azalea and that it also, um, the Bonfire is the one that changes the color, the foliage. I believe. Yes. No, it doesn't. No, it holds its bright green foliage year round. There was a, there's a different one that turns a bronzy color. But if you've got, let's say you're an NC State fan or a Georgia fan or somebody and you want red flowers, I love red flowers, then the bonfire would be a great one for you. Yes, 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 yes. Um, we got a lot of great Southern living plants in the past couple of days. Um, gardenias. Huge fan of gardenias. This is Diamond Spire. Diamond Spire is going to be a columnar upright gardenia. Now, if you know me, I do adore a double bloom. However, this has a single bloom, but that's okay because I actually have these also as well on the back patio at the steps. I have one on each side because they are columnar. They have that delicious same fragrance as the gardenia that we know and love and Look at the foliage on this. I adore the foliage on the Diamond Spire. It's a very rounded, very, very glossy. I promise they have not sprayed anything on these leaves. They are just that glossy. These are gonna be three to four tall and two feet wide. Gonna be full sun, hardy in zones seven to 10. I actually pruned mine for the first time in that three to four years this summer, I just shaped it up because it was getting nice and wide. Went in there and shaped it up and it started blooming again. It's crazy. So 
Diamond Spire, we have those as well. We also have the Autumn Starburst. Look, look at that. How fun is that? So that reblooming azalea, beautiful foliage on these. These are gorgeous plants. The Starburst is going to be um, three feet tall, three and a half feet wide. So we've got those, the Autumn Twist, another classic Encore Azalea Autumn Twist. You're gonna have on the same plant, let me show you for example. Now this is an older bloom, it's kind of hard to tell. But you will get them where they have that great bicolor. So you've got a light pink and a hot pink and you could go all the way even to and have a solid hot pink. So on the same plant, see in the back here, you'll have different splashes of color on that plant. Twist is gonna be a little bit bigger, four and a half tall by four wide. And we have, don't we have twist at the house, I believe, and they just are massive, covered in flowers, gorgeous, gorgeous plants. With your encores, any of your reblooming azaleas, you need full sun. So a minimum of five hours of sun or more, right? They are acid loving plants, so hollytone is a great way to take care of them and fertilize them. Uh, let's see. Let's go up to the trees because we did get fun new additions up here. Um, I don't know if you're if you're a, a fan of the proven winners um, plants then you may know, of course they do the annuals, the perennials, the shrubs. They're also getting into trees. Trees are a little harder to come by, of course, because trees are a slower grower. However, we were able to get our hands on the Midnight Express, which would be these and these over here. So the Midnight Express Redbud from Proven Winners, we're gonna come over here, um, you'll notice that these two already have tags on them because one of those is going to go in the signature garden. But that classic red bud, right? Let's see if we can gently pull down a, a limb here. So red buds, look at that big, huge, beautiful, dark leaf on it. That classic heart shape that we love about red buds. Red buds are native trees. We have them growing wild in the woods here. You'll always know what a red bud is, is because in early spring they'll do those really bright purple flowers directly on the stems of the tree and then the leaves flush out so midnight express is that red bud from proven winners of course nice big wide canopy on it uh, i'll put a link in the video description so you can go if you want to look at more details on that uh, midnight express because Clearly this is gonna be one of our first times growing this, but we do a ton of red buds. I just can't tell you the exact specifications on them right now. Another red bud that is, my gosh, this is a great one. This is the Rising Sun Red Bud. So it is gonna be 10 to 15 tall and wide, sun to part shade, and it is going to be hardy, um, zone five to, I didn't tell me what the, the heat, I think they're eight or a nine. Eight, yeah. I believe they're eight. We planted that, you know, that one that I planted. Yes. Do you have a picture of that still? I do. Okay, so we're going to flash up a picture of one that Jerry planted a couple of years ago. The rising sun will get all of these different colors as the leaves are coming out, and it looks all the colors of a sunrise. Absolutely gorgeous. I will say on just about every just about probably every red bud that I can think of, if you, if you can give them a break in the afternoon sun, it does really They're well. They're the edge of the forest tree. They are. They're the edge of the forest tree. So like my Midnight um, Express, I know that it is going to go closer to like within near the pond so that it's going to get afternoon shade. Loads of morning sun, but a break in the afternoon. So that's what you want to think about with your red buds. I would not this would not be one of those trees that I say plant in the middle of a field where it gets sun up to sun down. You're probably going to get some burn on them. So, but the rising sun, if you love a red bud and maybe you have darker red buds and you want a different color, oh my gosh, rising sun is going to be definitely one for you. And then we got a couple of Japanese maples. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, oh gosh. And one Tommy of you, Aku, Tommy, you, yeah. yeah, one of you sweet people, 
um, told me exactly how to pronounce this, and of course I have forgotten. Um, but, but this is going to be that beautiful lacy uh, foliage of a Japanese maple. It will be dark. These were under protection within the um, the greenhouse that we got them from, so they are under a bit of protection. Hence, the color on them is not um, as rich and as dark. The fall annuals, we're over here. <laughs> we'll just take a little peek see. We still have, of course, great uh, violas and pansies and the cabbage. Oh, we got in some creeping Jenny. So that is a fun one. Do we want to walk in there? We'll walk in there real quick. We'll walk in there real quick. Um, there's a lot going on today. When is there not a lot going on? But it seems like there's even more today. Um, mums, pansies. Sorry, these are violas. These are not pansies. Violas, right? So you know it's a viola because it's a smaller bloom and you have more blooms per plant. Uh, Creeping Jenny. So Creeping Jenny uh, is a great for us. It is a perennial. It is wonderful to use as a ground cover and or you can put it in a pot and it is a great trailer. It is also an evergreen. Now in the winter time, of course, it's not as glorious, but it is a great one. It is going to be hardy in zones does not yes four to eight so got a just this fun little addition to the line and then the one last shrub that i want to talk about because this is such a cool shrub i can't believe they're actually still here is the beyond pink caryopteris so the beyond pink caryopteris is i'll let jerry get in there because there are so many pollinators of various shapes, sizes, species, you name it, they are on here. The Beyond Pink Caryopteris is a very late season bloomer. This is when it blooms. So we're in September, mine and the berm are blooming and are gorgeous. So this is a Bluebeard Caryopteris, hardy in zones 7B to 9. You want to plant this in the hottest, driest area in your garden. It doesn't want to be fussed over. It wants you to leave it alone. The only thing that you're going to do as far as pruning is you don't prune it in the wintertime. Wait until your warmer temperatures start to hit and then give it a really hard prune almost down to the ground and you'll have all of this beautiful foliage. During the season, like the spring, summer, early fall, you're gonna have gorgeous green foliage. It's gonna look like a little green, almost like a mum with no flowers, if that kind of gives you an idea. And then all of a sudden, boom, these little pink spaceship saucer type blooms come up and it is gorgeous, especially, like I said, that late season garden, pollinators galore. They could care less that I'm sitting here. I mean, we've got, We've got a little bit of everything on here. So lots of fun options for you, whether you come here to Creekside Nursery, we would love to see you Wednesday through Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Trying to get everything straight here. Aha, my peoples. So we are next Saturday, that's gonna be September the 23rd. I'm looking to Jerry to make sure I'm getting my dates right. We got a lot of fun things happening. One, we have Bolton's food truck is coming back. So we will have the most delicious burgers and onion rings and french fries, all the things. So our friends from Bolton's will be here on Saturday, September the 23rd. So come get some lunch. We are also gonna have two classes that day. We are going to have all of our, um, the, we're gonna have one about monarchs. So come one of our customers, uh, Angie is like a monarch expert. So she is going to come and teach this class um, you're going to get to see little chrysalises and maybe learn about tagging, all things about monarchs, how you can support the monarchs in your garden, plants that you can plant, all the fun things with monarchs. So it doesn't matter if you're, you know, what age you are, if, it'd be a great thing for you. Like if you've got the kids, the mom and the grandmothers, everybody come for that. And then we're also going to be doing a fall container uh, class. So we're going to plant up some containers together. So all of these, this information will be coming later. Just be looking for that. We will have all those details for you and sign ups for those classes. So mark your calendar for Saturday, September 23rd. Lots of fun going on. All right, we gotta get back to work here, y'all. As always, thanks so much for joining the Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.